thank you for a very entertaining afternoon, everybody. I've been learning a lot. And I always point out when I talk to folks in California that that is where I learned my recycling. And I continue to learn from California. Um, I'm going to make a, a, a short a comment about where we are uh, uh, in the national picture. Um, the graphic that uh, Laura just put up is uh, half fact, half fiction. Uh, the first half is fact, uh, what happened, uh, uh, rounded off, of course. Uh, the data has been rounded off. Um, and it takes us, uh, the reality takes us to 2020, where we have uh, the early years of tremendous progress, the stagnation years of when uh, single stream was, uh, was promoted, a uh, little bit of a decline uh, after the uh, China debacle. And I foresee that we are in the midst of a tremendous rebound, as exciting as the first few years of uh, the recycling revolution in the late 90s, early 70s. And I base that on the fact that there's in, uh, since the China uh, import cutoff, there's been tremendous private investment over 5 billion in virtually every uh, re, uh, end use uh, 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 industry. Um, cities are taking over uh, their processing, they're taking over their marketing, um, they uh, are introducing uh, new strategies, pay as you throw, uh, etc. Uh, state agencies uh, have been proliferating, state recycling market development agencies, uh, there have been about five new state agencies and the uh, state agencies that existed uh, have been beefed up, uh, most notably in uh, uh, Michigan and, and Colorado. Unfortunately, California hasn't kept up um, the budget for the RMDZs, which were the initial uh, state agency that uh, was very progressive in promoting end use capacity. Uh, their budget has been stagnated and is declining because of inflation. Uh, but most impressive have been the new rules. Uh, pay as you throw, minimum content, bans on, on strategic materials, right to repair, surchargers, uh, which um, have been recommended at the local, state, and um, <clears throat> uh, federal level. Uh, I commend the Sierra Club for their uh, uh, producer responsibility fee, uh, which, uh, if passed, would dedicate hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to employment creation. Uh, the REDUCE Act, which would tax uh, virgin plastic. California has, of course, a, a, a plastic uh, a, a packaging tax. And uh, Texas uh, is, always, is also uh, doing some innovative um, uh, advanced disposal fees on, on plastic. Um, and um, I see this, as I said before, as a wonderful reawa reawakening. And we clearly have the Chinese uh, to uh, thank for that. Actually, we have sloppy recycling on the US side to thank that as well. Uh, I'd never thought I'd be praising a totalitarian uh, regime for making environmentally uh, progressive moves, but they have. Um, I see uh, the battles uh, between uh, the big corporations trying to stop this momentum because it gores their interests, the packaging industry, waste, uh, waste uh, monopolies, et cetera. And uh, the, uh, there have been uh, state levels of preemption. Colorado just uh, repealed theirs happily. Uh, but on the national level, the uh, uh, EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility, uh, which has in the past been promoted as exclusively uh, uh, PRO or industry control, um, I fear this control because it was uh, the control of the big waste companies at the uh, turn of the 20th, uh, 2000s that led to the stagnation, which you could see on the chart. Um, uh, the trend has been positive though. Uh, the uh, promoters of EPR uh, have uh, backed off the, what I'll call the British Columbia uh, monopoly control, uh, sort of a Soviet type command uh, uh, top-down system. Uh, and they, um, uh, we have separated the bottle bill uh, from EPR uh, consideration at the federal and state level. Uh, many uh, bills are being rewritten, eliminating the PRO uh, from the EPR legislation, which just means that the plastic and uh, industry and uh, industries will be taxed. Um, and um, the, uh, the effort is now to fit EPR into zero waste as opposed to uh, fitting zero waste into EPR. And I thank Ruth 
uh, and Gary Liss for coming up with that formula a couple of months ago. Uh, and we are working very hard, and I think we're winning, turning uh, the EPR program uh, into a true polluter pays as opposed to a polluter uh, controls. Um, the big danger we're facing is that if the petroleum and plastic industry get control over uh, our recycling through these PROs, we will have ongoing and expanded uh, incineration of plastic. Uh, the companies are already geared up for it. Uh, their investments of uh, close to a billion dollars in virgin plastic uh, capacity are, will be grandfathered in. Uh, the uh, the uh, plastic pyrolysis plants and pl burning plastics in uh, cement kilns will be expanded uh, and the profits will continue to go to an industry that has, uh, uh, has um, screwed us all in the past uh, uh, series of decades. So, uh, I, I don't think we can trust this industry. I, I think we've all been fighting this industry for so long on, on many levels. Um, I think we are on in, uh, in the right, going in the right direction. We have to tax what we don't like. We have to invest in what we want. Um, and uh, we have to ban what is dangerous. And we have to vote. And we have to champion the people who are carrying the zero waste flag. Uh, we want them in our legislatures, we want them in industry, and we have to support them at, at every level. Um, to close, I would like to say that EPR is an ideology that protects the vested interests of the uh, petroleum and plastic industry. Uh, it's an uh, ideology that is fighting uh, zero waste, uh, which is a universal truth. We cannot save the planet if we don't get to a zero waste uh, manufacturing and consumption uh, society. And I'm very optimistic that the seeds that have been planted since the late 60s and carried on by great organizations at the local, uh, state, regional, and federal level, including um, uh, Zero Waste USA and our National Recycling Coalition, uh, Gaia, Global uh, Anti-Incineration Alliance, and Zero Waste Europe, our allies across the, uh, across the ocean. And I think uh, we're going to win. It's going to take a lot of hard luck. And it's going to take protecting our democracy because we would not have gotten anywhere in these last 50 years if we didn't have the right to vote on these decisions and that that right to vote is not taken away by an EPR PRO or it's not taken away uh, by the Trumpers who are also threatening our democracy. <laughs>